Hello and welcome back. This is video number five. We're going to talk about how to automate the ring. Now that you understand how everything is interlinked, how everything is connected, and how you can kind of be creative and make your own ring. So after viewing the previous video, you can imagine how tedious and overwhelming it is to have to maintain the ring, much less get it set up yourself. But lucky for you, there is a way to automate it once you have set things up. It's getting things set up is the tedious process. Now, there's a software platform called IFTTT, and there's another one called Zapier.com that allows you to automate the process of moving content all around your social properties. So you could take a YouTube video and have it pushed to your WordPress site. And by pushed, I mean have it embedded on your WordPress site and then have it shared on your Facebook fan page, your Twitter page, your Instagram, and all of that. So you have essentially what we call triggers that whenever the trigger happens, then this something else happens. So what IFTTT stands for is if, then, this, that. So if this happens, then what kind of deal? Now, between the two, Zapier will cost you a lot of money after a while. A lot of times they'll give you some free triggers and zaps, which is what they call it. And beyond that, it will cost money. Whereas with IFTTT, it's just as good, but it's free. So let's hop on over and show you how IFTTT works. Okay, so if you head on over to IFTTT.com, that's IFTTT3Ts.com, you'll see this page. You can go ahead and create an account and you'll find a lot of really cool, interesting triggers is what we call it in IFTTT. So what a trigger is, is let's say you upload a YouTube video and then the system detects that the video has been uploaded. What do you want to happen after that happens? So if YouTube video has been uploaded, then post it to WordPress. Then after that, take the post on WordPress, maybe post it elsewhere or post a YouTube video to Twitter and so forth and so forth. So as you can imagine, this does get tedious, but if you map things out, if you know ahead of time what it's going to look like, then you can simply look at it and say, okay, I'm pointing YouTube to Twitter. So anytime video has been uploaded to YouTube, then it simply gets pushed or embedded into Twitter. So we need to make a IFTT trigger for that. So to do that, it's very easy. All you have to do is go to my applets up here and you can do a search for applets. Now services over here, I'm not going to click that, but this tab here allows you to essentially connect to all of the services that you're going to be using. So for example, as you can see here, I've got Tumblr to Weebly, RSS to Google Drive, a YouTube like to OneNote, YouTube like to Facebook page. And the reason why you might want to have YouTube likes is let's say for example that you already have maybe 50 videos on your YouTube channel, but you want to find a way to get those videos embedded. So what we figured out is that YouTube likes is the way to go. So obviously you can't re-upload a video that hasn't already been uploaded and is already getting thousands of views. The way you go about it is create a YouTube like trigger so that you can simply like it and then it gets posted to throughout your network. Now, as you can see here, you can easily get lost in the mix of everything. So that's why I said visually map everything out first. And then from that point, then you can simply go in and set things up. So like blogger to Weebly, YouTube to Facebook, YouTube to Blogger, YouTube to Instapaper, YouTube to DIIGO, YouTube to Google Plus page via Buffer, and all that. 
and we got YouTube to Tumblr, YouTube to Twitter. So it can go on and on and on if you really want it to, or you can simply pick and choose what you want and what you don't want and go from there. Now, in order to turn them on, you can simply click here to turn them on. But for the sake of just showing you, this is what it looks like. So as you can see, the Tumblr to Weebly is activated. So when it is activated, it'll have the on button and the green light. Okay, so obviously in order to set up the IFTTT room, you need to have accounts for all of your branded social properties. So in other words, you need to have the username and password for Facebook, for Twitter, for all the other social media properties. Now obviously if you already have some, then great you don't have to create those but for the ones that you do not have you want to be able to create those now while that does sound very simple there's a few things that you really need to focus on so to make sure that you're successfully able to do this without risking your accounts being closed and that does happen we're gonna cover a few things that you must do with all of your accounts in fact, some of our accounts have been banned or closed by mistake because it has to be done a certain way. So you need to make sure that you have everything correct. Now, first, you need to have an email address, preferably a Gmail account or an email account that is reliable. And you need to have one email address for that. Typically, you want to have something that is branded as well because you never know with these social media platforms if they're analyzing every step of the process. Now, most social media accounts we have found require you to have a unique telephone number. So you will need to use either yours or you'll need to get one. If you don't have one and you don't wanna use your personal telephone, there are several places to get unique telephone numbers that can be used for both voice and SMS and the reason why you want to have it for SMS as well is because some of these social media platforms will send you a text message now one in particular that we use is called line2.com that's line2.com and of course there are many out there but this is just one that we have tested and it works really well so a lot of times when you create a brand new social media property an account you need to have a unique telephone number. Now, the reason for needing a unique telephone number is because most social media platforms, they really wanna make sure that you are legitimate, especially nowadays. They have a lot of checks and balances and things that you need to get around to make sure that your account stays open. In fact, recently, Facebook has been on a major crackdown especially with everything that's been going on in the news. They want to make sure that you are legit and that you are not fake. Another thing is you'll also need to have a short bio, a description about your business, your website URL, a picture that is yours and a professional, or if you don't have your picture, you can use a professionally royalty-free stock photo. Now, why do you need all this information? Well, the reason why you need all this information is because when it comes to account creation, you are going to need to have every piece of these items in hand to copy and paste over. Obviously, if you outsource this process, it's going to be a lot easier. And with that case, you're definitely going to need these items. And it's just going to make your life a lot easier when you're able to copy and paste and all of that. Your picture is actually very important because even Facebook will review photos on all accounts to make sure that fake accounts are not created. In fact, we created an account one time and it was using kind of a fake image. And even though it was royalty free and all of that, Facebook declined it and in fact uh, did not approve the account. So they really want to make sure that your account is legitimate. Now, it's best if you take all this information and you write it out in an Excel spreadsheet so that you have it in hand, you have the username and passwords of all the social media properties, and you can simply log in and begin to create the accounts. 
So those are the kind of the best practices that we have found over the years in terms of creating accounts. And while some of those seem very basic, the one that really stood out that was really important was making sure that you had that unique telephone number. Depending on how big the ring is and how many rings there are and all of that. So it can go anywhere from a few hours to a few days to even a few weeks. And that's the reality of it is it takes hard work. But once it is set up and up and running, then you will begin to get better search engine ranking and you'll be able to get more exposure. So like I said, it can take a week or two for someone who's never done this before. In fact, if you outsource it, it's most likely going to take about a week for somebody who knows how to get things done because account creation takes a lot of time and then connecting everything from the triggers to the if else statements and all of that. So what we found over the years is outsourcing is worth it. It's only about 50 to a hundred dollars. If your two weeks are worth more, obviously if you're struggling with money and time is of essence and you have a lot of time, then you can set these up yourself. But for the most part, we've found that you really need to focus on your business and on whatever you're promoting. So go ahead and outsource this and it'll be worth your while. So let's discuss where you should go to find someone and look for you. We've actually used several of these places. So we will show you particular vendors and freelancers that we have used so that you can simply just copy and paste. So what you want to do is you want to go to a specific website called legit.com with two eyes. So L E G I I T.com. And when you get to this page, you want to type in I F T T T up at the top in the search bar click enter and then you're going to see a bunch of freelancers that can provide this service so as you can see here it says i will create an iftt network and as you can see there are like four different rings so typically one ring will cost you about fifty dollars so this guy here his name is gemini guy we've actually used him before and gotten fairly good results and what he'll do is all you have to do is give him the information for, like I said, the accounts and have the username and password. And what we usually do is we create a brand new email account. So it's nothing related to the, the old business accounts or anything like that. So it's a new email account, all the information on a spreadsheet, and then we send it over to him. He creates the accounts and then he logs into your IFTTT account, which you'll need an account for that as well. And then he'll set everything up. There's a lot of people that are doing this type of stuff. Some are doing like video embeds. And that's another thing with YouTube. One ranking factor is the more embeds, the better, but the more embeds that are done on a branded social property or a property that is actually related to your theme, that is actually better. The reason why is an embed is kind of considered a backlink to YouTube. So if we were to create a IFTT network that is specifically creating as many embeds in different social media properties that can help as well. So we can have a ring or several rings. And on top of that, we can have video embeds. Now, the nice thing about legit.com is it's really focused on a lot of online marketing, SEO and, and other different services like backlinks, PBN links and all of that. Uh, but what we found is you don't want to get too fancy. You want to start out slow and work your way up because if you start just throwing a bunch of backlinks or even video embeds right away, it doesn't look natural, right? If you release a piece of content, sometimes it can take a week or weeks until you start getting hundreds or even thousands of likes or engagement. So you don't want to throw thousands or even hundreds of thousands of backlinks right away, right? So that's not going to look natural. And going back to what we talked about earlier in the previous videos, does it look natural? If it doesn't look natural or doesn't seem natural, then that can be a problem. So legit.com is 
an awesome site to go to. And this guy right here, Gemini Guy, like I said, is someone that we've used. Now, obviously, you can go to these other people and look at the reviews and see if they have good reviews and see what other people are saying. Created the ring yourself or you hired somebody to do it. Testing is very, very important. In fact, we outsource most of our rings, but yet we still have to go back and test it out. A lot of times when these freelancers are in the mode, they'll test it out, but they're really relying on you to test it out because they can't upload a YouTube video to your YouTube channel unless they have access. And a lot of times we don't give them access for you know privacy and security reasons. So let's go ahead and discuss how to do that. So let's hop on back over to IFTTT and I'll show you how you need to test things out. Okay, so we're back at IFTTT and what I recommend that you do is you open up the Excel spreadsheet that the freelancer gives you or that you've created yourself. And on that Excel spreadsheet, it should have your username and password and all the links to all of the accounts that were created. So in that case, how do we test it out? Well, obviously we're gonna to need to upload a video to YouTube. Now I'm not gonna do that now, but if you upload that, everything should work throughout the network. So the way you can test things out is simply by going to the websites that are in the Excel spreadsheet. So once you go there, if it has been posted, it works. If it's not, it's not working. If it's not working, then you'll need to kind of troubleshoot it. Either get the guy who created the ring to help you out, or if you did it yourself, this is basically what you need to do. So you need to check through and figure out what's not working. So if we found that the YouTube video is not being posted to blogger.com, we need to figure out why. So we need to go to the applet. So this in case is the YouTube like to blogger. So it's a little bit different than the upload to YouTube channel. But if we click on that, you can see here that we have the applet that goes from YouTube like to blogger. So if we click on this here, you can actually get a better view of what's happening. So Basically, anytime a YouTube video is liked, we create a post on Blogger, we put the title, we put all this. Now, we need to figure out why. Usually, a lot of times, the reason why it's not posting is because it's not connected to the account. So, you want to make sure that it's actually connected. If it is connected, then sometimes you'll need to look at, for example, this. Is it posting the title and maybe not the video? Or is it not posting everything? If it's not posting everything, it usually means it's a connection issue. If it is posting like the title, but not the, the body or the YouTube, then maybe it's the embed code is incorrect. So you can check that. So really what it comes down to is just trial and error. But if you really outsource this, it's really going to be a lot easier. But that's what we found to be the case. And most of the time is that the services are not being connected. And I will say IFTTT, sometimes it can be hit or miss. And sometimes in that case, the services may or may not be working. And that's really reliant sometimes on the, the YouTube channel, the social media platform, and all that. So hopefully those tips can help you along the way when it comes to testing.